Welcome back to another video and if you are new here my name is Hannah I am a western practical astrologer. Okay so in today's video we are going to be talking all about this upcoming solar eclipse in the sign of Libra happening on the 2nd of October. Please if you can make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff if you would like to keep updated. But before we do go further into this, if you would like to book a reading with me, you can visit my website, hannaselsware.com. There you can also find my astrology products. And I would also like to say thank you so, so much to my patrons over at Patreon for all of your support. If you would like to join the Patreon, which is a great way to support the channel, you can do so by going to the link below. Okay, so here we notice a bit of an overview of the astrology, what we're going to be touching on today, and then of course we will get into your horoscopes. So notice here that the sun and moon are 10 degrees, so the eclipse is happening at 10 degrees in Libra, conjunct Mercury there, which is at 11 degrees, so very, very close there, plus there is a conjunction with the south node, and at the same time we see here that there is an opposition to the north node in Aries. Then there is a square aspect happening. So there is a square aspect to the eclipse and that is between the eclipse and Mars. Keep in mind that Mars is the dispositor of the north node and Venus and then Venus is in Scorpio. Now Mars is also making a trine to Venus, which can be quite supportive energy. And the thing about Venus is Venus is the dispositor of the eclipse of, well, of the moon, of the moon. And also further just notice here that when we bring Saturn into this, there is a grand water trine in the skies, plus the sextile to Ceres between uh, Venus and Ceres. And Ceres is also part of a cardinal T square. And then lastly, we've got Mars making that sextile to Vesta. So we're going to touch on these areas today. 10 degrees. This eclipse will happen at 10 degrees, which equivalents to the number one in numerology. So this is a hard working energy, pioneering. This is about being a go-getter, a leader. Indeed, this is about embracing new beginnings. Plus, we also see here that the number one is a highly independent number naturally there can also be a quality uh, about the number one that is quite selfish there is that part of it too just keep in mind then that this eclipse is opposing the north node in Aries so there is this sort of taking a step forward being a leader being daring being a pioneer Plus the number 10 here, when we think about the degrees, right? So the 10th degree in astrology is a Capricorn degree. So there is some building happening. <laughs> this is about structure. This is about building and taking responsibility. Then also I wanna mention that this solar eclipse is happening within the Aquarius Deacon as well. So there is an element of change and breakthroughs. Just to remind you that solar eclipses are really about significant new chapters, powerful new beginnings, notable new opportunities, a phase worth paying attention to. We are planting seeds for the future. Naturally, this is also about going within, being quiet, resting when we can, addressing our shadow. Now, here are some important dates. So just to remind you that this solar eclipse is part of a set of eclipses on the Aries Libra axis. So this has been happening since 2023. The solar eclipse in Aries opened this set of eclipses back in April 2023 there. 
and Aries will also close the eclipses in April 2025. The day after, get this, Neptune enters Aries after being in Pisces for 13 years. So it's safe to say that we are about to enter this huge collective shift. By 2026, both Saturn and Neptune will be in Aries. So there's a new paradigm. We're entering a new era. Everything you thought you were will dissolve. And we're also going to be going from this collective year, number nine in 2025, to the number one in 2026. So really aligning with these major shifts. Indeed, this is the dawn of a new era. If we also think about how Pluto will be in Aquarius by the end of 2024, and then Uranus will enter Gemini by 2025-2026 as well. So with the this solar eclipse happening on the 2nd of October, do keep in mind that this is the final Libra eclipse for another cycle. So what have you learned then? Really consider and ask yourself um, these kinds of questions as I go through your horoscopes too. So to continue on with some information, during the solar eclipse, we're planting new seeds. Okay, this is a new moon, we're planting new seeds. How do you weigh your scales? What, what kinds of things do you place onto the scales there? How are the scales adjusting for you? This is a highly karmic time. This is seeing that there are consequences to your actions. You have a choice, recognizing that you have a choice. Decision making time. Now, with that being said, Libra can be an indecisive sign, can sort of go back and forth, can maybe sit on the fence at times, but this is still an opportunity for us to think about, okay, what kinds of decisions am I making and what, or what choices are available to me and which kinds of decisions will I make based on those choices? Is there anything maybe that you have neglected? What can you welcome more of? And this is also about appreciation for the things we have and the people we love. This is so much about realignment. Realignment and to restore balance. A highly restorative time. So we'll be focusing a great deal on balance, realignment, uh, restoring that balance there throughout your horoscopes. But it's also about speaking up for truth and fairness and justice. Mm. Some justice matters may come up. Some legal matters may come up around this new moon. Though I would like to mention here that by July 2025, as the first quarter moon occurs in Libra, uh, the intentions that you set around this time period will be tested. And then by April 2026, during the full moon in Libra, we will release. We will shed. Rewards will happen. Clarity will occur. And following on from that, come 2027, during the third quarter moon in Libra, we will adjust. We can also consider what we have learned. So this story is just beginning in terms of the intentions we set around this new moon. But do keep in mind that at the same time, such intentions are a part of the eclipses which have been happening in Aries and Libra over the past couple of years. Now, the other significant thing is that the eclipse will conjunct the south node. So really, this is a breathing out energy. This is a time of release. This is time to let go, to ease up. And with Mercury also playing a role, this is a, this is about exploring what alternatives are available to us, which options are available to us. And then the North Node in Aries says, your fighting spirit calls. Remember that the North Node is very much a part of this too. It has something to say about leadership, about our actions and 
avoid self-assertion. You're fighting spirit, going after what you want. Moving on to Mars. So like I said, Mars will make a square to the eclipse. Mercury will also make a square here to Mars, but let's think about Mars for a moment. Mars is in Cancer. So our path here around this eclipse is being challenged, challenged by family concerns or issues or by our emotional needs. But can we hold space for our emotions without them ruling our life? Can we respect the tides, but not become swallowed whole by them? Our emotional security may be a driving force for our desires for balance. So do keep that in mind too. And then with the groundwater trine happening, powerful emotional insights can occur around this time period and will also start to unfold over the next six months, couple of years. But yes, powerful emotional insights, which can be healing and quite therapeutic. The spiritual speaks, the unknown awakens us. Then when we think about Venus and Scorpio, this is about deeper connection, deeper connection. Whew, feeling into that. We may also be determined about our values, fighting tooth and nail for our resources and our security. Yes. Now, I, I do get that many planets are in their fall, they're in their detriment, but do not fear because things are unfolding behind the scenes. Then, when we focus a bit on the sextiles to Ceres and Vesta, well, just to continue on firstly with the groundwater trine, that groundwater trine supports us with those emotional insights or those spiritual insights, I suppose both. <laughs> they support us with spiritual insights and words of emotional wisdom. And then with Ceres, Ceres is in Capricorn, making that sextile to Venus. This then suggests that we are asked to be resourceful, dedicated, to tap into our personal power, to take responsibility, and to showcase integrity around this new moon. It's a matter of considering the actions we have taken up to this point. Now, with that in mind, yes, there is also the same degree square between Ceres and Mercury. So just this can highlight thinking about what you are harvesting during this time period, appreciating your, rewar your rewards and your successes, but also acknowledge any loss, acknowledge any grief, any pain. That can be quite a challenging thing, a difficult thing, but here's the other thing. With this cardinal T-square, perhaps what we can do is we can soothe, self-soothe instead of reacting. Mm -hmm. And with Mars, sex Vesta, nervous system regulation. <sighs> right, it may feel like around this new moon that there's just so many options. We don't know what to do. We're overthinking which way's which. What do I want? Where do I go? Uh, maybe questioning certain people's views and opinions and not wanting to upset other people, not wanting to offend other people. There can be the whole walking on eggshells, people pleasing, walking on a tightrope kind of stuff, trying to keep everything in balance. And it's like, how do I do that? Ah, So yes, it can feel a little bit nervy, shaky, inconsistent, <laughs> unreliable. But I think that this grand water trine can be so, so supportive, so helpful for us in that we can regulate, okay? We can regulate our emotions. So with all of that being said, we are now going to get into your horoscopes. First up, we have Aries. Okay, so Aries, this solar eclipse is happening in your seventh house. 
So we're thinking about realignment, readjustment when it comes to business contracts, business deals, right, agreements, thinking even about the kinds of ways that you do business, approach it. How can you maybe consider being diplomatic, being somewhat rational and reasonable, but also to speak up for truth, to speak up for justice and some kind of honesty there, I think, Aries. It's time to be brave, okay? The North Node is in your sign. So do you remember this is about being somewhat brave about your life path, about your aims and your goals, about what you want. At the same time with this square to Mars, there could be some inner frustrations present for you. It could be that you are feeling very protective of your emotional needs or you're feeling very protective of your family and your loved ones. Maybe there are a few things that you would really like to get off your chest and to speak up on, especially when it comes to business things, legal matters, uh, certain relationships and partnerships there. But perhaps this grand water trying serves as a reminder that it's important to focus on what you can control rather than freaking out or worrying about everybody else out there, so to speak. Maybe this can actually be a good opportunity for you to do more inner reflection there with the grand water train. Okay, now we wanna think about Taurus. So Taurus, this solar eclipse is happening in your sixth house. So the realignment and the adjusting qualities here are associated with things like your habits, your routines, just your everyday life here, thinking about work and employees, coworkers, right? So maybe you would like to restore some kind of balance or for things to be a bit more harmonious for you. And um, maybe it is a case of speaking up for truth and honesty and justice. Or, you know, this could even be simply about seeking out more pleasing and rewarding uh, partnerships at work. And at the same time, with the North Node in the 12th, maybe this is also highlighting that if it does feel a bit unreliable or a bit like you're having to cater to everybody's views and opinions and there's a lot of sitting on the fence and people pleasing things like that then maybe the north node says can you take some time to yourself can you maybe take some time away from the everyday busyness of life for just a moment to just go within or to spend some time on your own so that you can feel a bit more level? Maybe you need just a bit of space around this time, Taurus. And with this square to the third house, yeah, this is where we notice all the, the sibling stuff, arguments with siblings, arguments with cousins or just close relatives, family matters become quite dramatic. And also you really feeling like you need to protect, to protect your loved ones in this way. You know, perhaps this is a case of just having to say that thing to a co-worker or this could be about asking for some kind of support some sort of assistance from a co-worker, from a member of staff, or even just assistance from someone who can help you health-wise, okay? The health stuff could come up, you know, your mental well-being here, Taurus. All the more reason to really be able to take a step back from any chaos. And with the groundwater trying happening in these houses for you, I think this is highlighting just how much there is emotional support available. 
that there are people you can reach out to, if, especially if it does feel like things are just um, quite challenging in terms of anger, frustrations, uh, people getting their back up um, and you really needing to protect or to defend yourself in some way, shape or form. Okay, so Gemini. Gemini, the solar eclipse is happening in your fifth house. So this is looking at some of the realignments and adjustments to do with your children, to do with your hobbies, your forms of recreation, your creative pursuits there, Gemini. And the other thing, you know, that I've thought of here is the whole tightrope stuff to do with Libra. That's what I'm getting. The There can be, of course, the weighing of the scales with Libra, but the tightrope, it can feel like at times we're walking on a tightrope and that can be a very shaky place. So, you know, maybe for you here, Gemini, you will set new intentions um, to do with this kind of stuff with respect to your creativity, with respect to time off, uh, just enjoying yourself. Maybe you recognize that you would like a more time off in this way you want to create more balance in your life and then with the north node being in the 11th house perhaps this highlights something about stepping into some sort of leadership role within groups and within communities and teams um, and maybe just being a bit more decisive and active within those areas so yes I think especially for you Gemini you know a lot has been changing and moving about when it comes to your communities and your groups and teams and then also when it comes to your hobbies and your creativity over these past few years so a bit of a balancing act yes um but I also see this as you coming to terms with what options are available to you maybe seeking some kind of alternatives there and maybe speaking up a bit about justice and fairness too. Plus, with Mars in the second house, this could be a case of things feeling a bit shaky when it comes to financial matters, when it comes to your resources, your physical security. Maybe you're feeling on edge, maybe you're feeling frustrated, uh, perhaps you're feeling extra protective of your property or of your resources there. With the Grand Water Trine, for you, it is about coming to terms with your emotional security and your emotional needs when it comes to work, your career, right, your professional life, just thinking about more of the practical, physical things. But, you know, I think that there is some sort of support and assistance available to you, Gemini, which, uh, to be fair, with Venus in the sixth house for you, we do see some significant financial changes and shifts happening for you at work. Okay, so Cancer. Cancer, this solar eclipse is happening in your fourth house. So we're seeing here this realignment, this adjustment occurring when it comes to your family life. Maybe this is a case of certain family members having to shimmer, having to speak up, having to explain themselves. Maybe this is about you having to speak up in some way, Cancer. Perhaps we're noticing just greater desires for balance there within your family home or just when it comes to your emotional needs and your emotional security there too, Cancer. And then with this North Node in the 10th, there's, this is still a part of a pretty big um, story for you. So we think about how significant changes have, have been happening for you with respect to your career path and your home life and different goals and ambitions etc there 
And so we could then see a greater um, focus or desire to want to keep yourself going as well when it comes to your profession to think about your achievements and your accomplishments and to still be quite active about those areas it's just that a lot of the family stuff is um asking you to pay attention with mars in your first house it could be that you're feeling extra ambitious and motivated and you're being quite self-sufficient and independent during this time period, Cancer. But maybe this is also looking at this greater push or urge to protect your family, to protect your identity, to stand up for who you are in a lot of ways. And yet with this grand water trine happening, it appears as if cancer, you are evolving and growing when it comes to your individuality, your ego, when it comes to self exploration. This could be quite a supportive energy in that maybe there's a lot happening within yourself and you can see just how much you're maturing. Okay, so Leo. Leo, this solar eclipse is happening in your third house. So here we notice for you, Leo, this realignment and this readjustment to do with your everyday conversations and discussions, thinking about your social media platform, considering as well your writing, your researching, how you educate yourself, and how you communicate, of course. So there could be a few things that you are addressing around this time period to do with these matters. And then we also see here that at the same time, there is some kind of ambition, this go-getter influence going into that of higher education right now for you too, Leo. So maybe this is a good opportunity for you to try and focus, for you to try and set your eyes on your goals within um, matters related to um, higher education, advanced training, just wanting to learn more there and to just expand your knowledge. And with Mars then being in the 12th, it could be suggested here, Leo, that you're feeling a bit on edge or maybe it's that you just need to be behind the scenes. You need to be on your own. There's maybe a lot going on for you um, that people do not see around this time period good opportunity for you to just, you know what, be really kind to yourself. This is about your safety. This is about your inner security, Leo. And of course, we notice here with the ground water trine, it's perhaps that a lot is happening for you family-wise, intimacy-wise, and maybe psychologically a lot is going on. But naturally, this can also be a good opportunity um, for you to just Take that time, you know, to take that time that you need. Okay, so Virgo. Virgo, this eclipse is happening in your second house. So we're thinking about the realignment and the readjustment to do with your finances. So how you can create better balance and harmony there, considering your physical security, considering resources and everything and uh, your self-worth is also highlighted here. So there could be some adjustments that you make around this time period to do with these areas, Virgo. And then at the same time, we notice that with the North Node in the eighth house, you have been on this sort of psychological journey over these past few years. So this is also about, you know, um, taking a moment to maybe recognize how far you've come or perhaps this is about being a, um, a bit more familiar with just how bold and brave and courageous you are underneath the surface. And with Mars being in Cancer, it does appear as if you're being challenged in some way uh, with respect to your hopes and dreams for the future, or maybe, you know, these things are linked to protection and family and just 
future matters seem to be on your mind and maybe you're a bit frustrated, you're a bit annoyed. Um, but we notice, of course, with the Grand Water Trine that this can be an opportunity for you to maybe lean on friends, to maybe communicate with partners, to maybe open up with siblings or just anyone that you trust. It's important to maybe communicate what your fears are or just to share that space with people you love. So Libra, here we see that the solar eclipse is happening in your sign. Yes, it is your time, Libra. So we notice for you the, the realignment and the readjustment to do with, well, your life path, your goals, your aims, what you want out of life there, your identity, your physical appearance, maybe wanting to create more um, balance and harmony in your life within these areas. And then with the North Node in the seventh, you have been on this journey where you've been quite active, you've been quite brave and courageous, you've been a leader when it comes to your partnerships and your relationships, making bold moves there, Libra. Then with the square to Mars, there seems to be some kind of tension and frustration to do with your career path, to do with your long term goals, your achievements, etc. Um, but, you know, we also want to think about how this can highlight you seeking some sort of emotional security, you needing to protect your family, really thinking about putting your family first. That could be a big thing, Libra. And with the ground water trying here, we do see some sort of activity and uh, progression going into that of your financial state, uh, thinking about your career path and your relationships with managers and bosses, or just considering then your daily routines and habits and how you would like to change things. Scorpio. Okay, so Scorpio, the solar eclipse is happening in your 12th house. So a lot is happening for you behind the scenes, a lot of things people do not see, Scorpio. This is a time where you can maybe um, adjust a few matters out of view, okay, out of view of the public. Maybe this is about knowing what to keep private, knowing what to keep to yourself, or this is just um, a time where there's a lot that's going on for you mentally, emotionally, and maybe there's just certain things that you're not ready to talk about or ready to share, but all in due course. And furthermore, I would say this can be a good time period to try to relax your mind, to try to give to yourself, right? How to sort of pour into yourself, so to speak, right? To take some time away or to maybe even come to terms with any indecision that can sometimes lead to yourself undoing Scorpio. Now with the North Node also being in Aries, it does appear as if you've been on this path, Scorpio, where you're you're doing the daring things, you're doing the bold things within your working life, you're making things happen when it comes to your services. So there's still a lot of fire, I suppose you could say, going into these areas. And then also Mars in the ninth, well, there seems to be some conflicting energy here, I think, about the truth and about perhaps legal stuff, right? Legal stuff could be a part of this. And maybe these things are tied to family and safety, security. Uh, perhaps even there is some sort of challenge to do with travel or freedom or exploration right so thinking about how you would like to um evolve in this way or expand in this way but it just appears as if there's still some things that are holding you back or maybe causing you some inner turmoil inner frustration but hey with the grand water trine we do see then this supportive energy to do with your aims and your goals and your values your priorities especially when it comes to children, when it comes to your creativity and your hobbies. Sagittarius. Okay, so Sagittarius, this solar eclipse is happening in your 11th house. So this realignment, this adjustment stuff is so much about your hopes and wishes for the future, right? So thinking about what you want for your life, your future, uh, thinking also about um 
group involvements, group participations there, how you give to the group, how you share within the group, what you get from it, uh, thinking about the kinds of communities you're a part of, friendships you're a part of there. So yeah, you may seek to um, assess a few matters there within these areas and to seek some kind of harmony, maybe peace too. But then again, you know, as I was saying earlier, this could be a case of feeling like you're walking on a tightrope you know, feeling like it's a bit shaky and it, it's not so stable. But then we notice that the North Node is in the fifth house. So over the past few years, you have been really focusing on different um, examples here. It could be the family that you're raising, so children you have. This could be about the things you enjoy, the things that bring you happiness, the things that you love. Uh, this could also be about your creative pursuits and perhaps even romantic relationships. So you've made a few significant uh, choices and dis uh, decisions, should I say, when it comes to these areas. So maybe it's good to consider just a bit of indep your independent views within these areas, which can perhaps even support you in some way, shape or form when it comes to the group stuff that feels a bit you know the group stuff that you're unsure about essentially okay so with mars in the eighth house we see that actually there's some uh it could feel like a lot of tension beneath the surface it can feel like there's an elephant in the room uh maybe you're you're feeling quite on edge about family stuff but you're not quite ready to go there yet or quite ready to open up yet could also be that you're addressing some things to do with the past, family situations are coming up, you're being triggered perhaps by people in the present that remind you of family situations. Naturally, with the groundwater trying here, it could be a good opportunity for you to do some self-care and maybe just spend some time um, trying to uh, look, just look after your emotional needs, basically, and to also set clear boundaries about family stuff. Thinking about what you're willing to tolerate and not tolerate there when it comes to family relationships, Sagittarius. Moving on to Capricorn, so we have this solar eclipse in Libra in your 10th house. So for you Capricorn, we're thinking about adjustments and realignment to do with your career path, your professional life, your long-term achievements there so maybe this is looking at how you would like to uh, change things or set things up in such a way where things feel balanced and more more harmonious for you this is restorative energy then uh, when it comes to your public persona your reputation Plus, with the North Node in the fourth house, it does appear as if Capricorn, you've been on a bit of a journey over the past few years to do with family, right? Your family life, what that looks like, you being maybe a bit of a leader within your family there, or taking a chance on someone, or taking a risk, perhaps, even when it comes to your living situation, and being quite courageous and daring. Now, with the square to Mars, yes, Capricorn, there could be some arguments and disagreements and disputes within your one-on-one -on -one relationships. It could be that you're extra protective or it's that your partner is extra protective, your significant other is extra protective. Maybe this is also just about security focus in general. But yes, this stuff can be a bit of a driving force for your desires for balance. So we think about the balance stuff to do with your career. But maybe this is also looking at potential conflict to address, which to be fair, it could very well feel like certain people are walking on eggshells around this time. But, you know, with the groundwater trying, maybe this is a good opportunity to think about, OK, how can I really dig deep, look within, right, to dig deep within yourself, to look within and to consider, right, what do I want to say here? How do I wish to communicate my piece here? Um, what about my values and how that shows up within my friendships and my groups and teams? Maybe it is about communication in many ways and just being quite clear about what you want and about what you need. 
So Aquarius, Aquarius, this solar eclipse is happening in your ninth house. So we see here some adjustments, realignment to do with your higher education, to do with further knowledge there, thinking about how you expand your mind, how you expand your worldviews. But maybe this is about teamwork, this is about being a team player, this is about recognizing that other people have their views and their opinions. And, you know, think about how Libra is a relationship oriented sign as well. So remember that there are plenty of people out there to help to support you. And to ask certain questions, to gain feedback from others can be really beneficial for you. And that may even assist you a little bit with this balance stuff. And naturally, with the North Node being in your third house, you've been on a bit of a journey these past few years, Aquarius, where you're really learning to find your voice. You're really learning to communicate, to speak up for yourself, to say uh, what you want exactly. Now, at the same time, we want to think about how Mars is in the sixth house. So this could be a case of you wanting to focus on security when it comes to work when it comes to your services but it could also be where there's some fears actually coming up some fears about change some fears about doing something outside of your comfort zone uh, there could be some worries about co-worker relationships or just freaking out about oh will this person like me or what do they think about me you know these these we uh fears could start to creep in these doubts could start could start to creep in but it could also be a case of you having to really go with the tides, to go with the fluctuations there of change with respect to your everyday habits and tasks and responsibilities, which again, it could just feel like uh, a bit frustrating, a bit frustrating. With that being said though, with the groundwater trying, you are supported, I think, supported when it comes to your career path, your professional life, your resources, your finances. Naturally, though, it is still about having to put in the work and just embracing the, the winds of change, I suppose, Aquarius. And I know that you do often change directions in life. You can do that very suddenly. Uh, but you're still a fixed sign. And I think that when change does happen it can take you a bit of time to really readjust but you can you can do this lastly we have pisces so pisces this solar eclipse is happening in your eighth house a lot going on then underneath the surface out of clear view this is about hidden matters this is about getting to the truth standing for truth and justice perhaps when it comes to what is hidden and when it comes to certain financial situations there, considering things like debt and loans, investment stuff, um, repay, you know, all these repayment things that need to be done, um, considering as well intimacy, intimacy conversations, shared resource conversations. So how do you join together? How do you share it in this way? And maybe you're, you're um, this is about you, having to consider how you can gain greater harmony and balance within these areas and maybe too a part of it is to recognize that there is uh, there is others there are other people available to seek help from guidance from but just naturally also we want to be cautious of being maybe too codependent or too reliant on other people as well with the south node there Naturally, with the North Node in the second house, you have been on a bit of a journey, Pisces, where you've been called to be quite brave and courageous about your finances and your resources. So the independent stuff, financial freedom stuff has been quite strong for you, being a bit of a pioneer, a bit of a daredevil, so to speak, taking certain risks, knowing what you want. But of course, with all of this Libra energy, it is about trying to create some kind of... Uh, harmony with in your relationships and how those things are tied to shared resources so really coming together joining up together with others to discuss financial matters you know this could even be a business thing right this could be a management thing a business thing 
etc. So then we also think about Mars. So Mars is in the fifth house. Right. With Mars here in this position, it could be that there's some tension, there's some inner frustration to do with what you like to do, to do with hobbies, your creativity, your forms of enjoyment. It could be a case of disputes about free time, disputes about children. Uh, it could be that there's some annoyances about family matters that seem to, to take a lot of joy and fun out of a situation. Maybe you're having to really come together with your significant other to discuss family matters in a more serious way. But, but uh, I would say overall protection is a big driving force here. Security is a big driving force here. And with the groundwater trying, of course, we notice that this is the type of this is the type of energy that says you are supported by gaining new information, right? This could be about becoming more familiar with legal things, right? So to keep yourself up to speed with legal proceedings or to make sure that you know the ins and outs of the travel situation. So the travel arrangements are done well. Okay, so that is everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And I do wanna say, of course, thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon for all of your support. Thank you, I appreciate you. And if you did enjoy this video today, you can always buy me a coffee, but there is no pressure, of course. Uh, but overall, I do wanna say thank you so much for listening. And if you would like to book a reading with me, you can visit my website over at hannahselsworth.com. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also give this video a like if you did like it today. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.